it's the Alakir. They're telling the truth. Thanks for watching. My Bard mod pack will be out in a couple of weeks, so be sure to subscribe to see that. Okay, fine, I'll show my working. In My Time of Need is a pretty interesting quest in Skyrim. It offers multiple endings, allowing you to side with one of two parties, as do many other quests. But unlike those other quests, there is a right answer here. Usually with these sorts of missions, it's about choosing the side you agree with more, or choosing the option that fits the morality of your character. But here, someone is telling the truth, and someone is lying. It's your job as the player to determine who you believe. What makes it more interesting is that the game never actually tells you if you chose correctly or not, leaving us with a pretty substantial mystery. So in this video I'm going to go through the most commonly cited pieces of evidence online, as well as some stuff that I've found myself to try and find the truth behind this quest. First, a quick summary of the quest itself, which triggers after you kill the first dragon, or after some Khajiit kill it for you. At the gates of Whiterun you will find two Alakir warriors, stuck at customs, that ask for help finding a Red Guard woman, since they aren't allowed in the city themselves. Now, Whiterun doesn't have a very large Red Guard population, so it wasn't long before I ran out of people to question. Becoming bored, I went to the only place I could think to try. In the Bannered Mare, you will meet Sadia, who is easily identified by her scar. After you introduce yourself to her, she will proceed to explain why she is hiding, after briefly threatening you, and it is here that the quest splits. You can either travel to Rorikstead and then help the Alakir trap Sadia at the stables, or you can help Sadia by interrogating a member of the Alakir in the Whiterun jail, then hunting them down in their nearby hideout. It is here that the Alakir leader, Kamatu, will explain their side of things, and you're given the choice once again to side with them over Sadia. The quest will then end with you either agreeing to lead Sadia to the stables for Kamatu, or wiping them out there and then. The only other relevant piece of information to mention is a random event you may stumble across where you find two Alakir warriors harassing a Redguard woman. You can intervene, but if you leave the scene to play out on its own, the Alakir warriors will realise that the woman is not Sadia due to the lack of scar. Then they will apologise and move on. I'll talk more about this encounter later in the video. So the quest seems pretty straightforward, but the character is constantly being fed information that conflicts with what they previously heard, forcing them to constantly question whether they're making the right choice. We're told that the Alakir are evil Thalmor mercenaries, so clearly we can't side with them. But we also find out that Sadia is an evil Thalmor traitor, so clearly we can't side with her. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Okay, I'm going to go over the most commonly cited evidence as to why each side is lying, as well as some of my own stuff, starting with Kamatu and the Alakir. But first, let's hear what he claims is going on. She sold the city out to the Aldmeri Dominion. Were it not for her betrayal, Tanith could have held its ground in the war. The other noble houses discovered her betrayal, and she fled. They want her brought back alive. I'm going to start with what I think is the least convincing piece of evidence, that being this urn. A little known feature in Skyrim is that the city's Hall of the Dead will spawn an urn or a coffin whenever one of its citizens is killed throughout the game. I imagine some of you are already questioning how exactly this is some kind of clue. It's a blatant clue, isn't it? <laughs> this becomes relevant because an urn will appear for Sadia after completing the quest, assuming you side with the Alakir. Many consider this evidence that Kamatu is lying, and actually killed Sadia, despite saying she would be returned to Hammerfell for judgement. Explain that one if you can! The main problem that I've got with this point is that I was never actually able to get the urn to spawn, I was only able to get it to trigger by actually killing Sadia myself, so I'm not entirely sure that this one's real. But I think in the interest of fairness, I'm going to assume that it is, and talk about it from that perspective. Honestly, I think this one's quite easy to explain. From the perspective of the people of Whiterun, Sadia just randomly disappeared without a trace one day. She didn't tell anyone what was going on or why, she just vanished. 
So with the information they had, they're going to think that she's probably dead. Skyrim is a dangerous place. I think they would of course assume she isn't coming back and hold a funeral. With a symbolic urn, maybe containing some of the items she left behind. I think it's also worth mentioning that Kamatu has a very negative reaction to Sadia dying at any point during the quest. All that effort and you just kill her? You've ruined everything! So either he is an incredibly convincing actor, or he actually does intend on keeping Sadia alive. So this point doesn't really hold up for me. Another point I found being cited a lot is regarding the Alakir random encounter I mentioned earlier. There are posts around the internet that claim that killing these Alakir will result in Thalmor agents being sent to attack the player. This can also be triggered by helping the Greymanes in the Missing in Action quest, and other similar missions that pit the player against the Old Merry Dominion. The main issue I have with this is that I've found just as many people stating that the same event can be triggered by helping the Alakir capture Sadia, and I have been unable to replicate it either way, so I'm just going to discount it. Events like this don't usually state exactly why they're being triggered, so I honestly think a lot of these posts might just be people not realising what they're doing to cause the Thalmor to attack them. It can be caused by something as small as wearing an amulet of Talos, which is an easy thing to miss. It also makes no sense to me that the Thalmor would do nothing to protect Sadia, but would make an effort to avenge her, and it makes even less sense that they would hire some mercenaries to capture her, but send the actual Thalmor Justicars to take down anyone who interferes with those mercenaries, instead of just sending the Justicars to capture Sadia themselves. The next piece of evidence is the fact that the Alakir are hiding out with a group of bandits, which suggests to some that they are a shady group of mercenaries and essentially bandits themselves. The thing is, the Alakir are a group that were instrumental in fending off the Old Merry Dominion invasion of Hammerfell, and Skyrim is currently under Thalmor occupation, so of course they need to lay low and not draw the attention of the Old Merry agents. From the perspective of Hammerfell, this is still very much enemy territory, so finding a hidden away location to use as their base of operations is a necessary move, and making a deal with bandits seems like a good way to do that. This political affiliation also explains why the Alakir are going to have a harder time doing things like entering the city of Whiterun. I do have to wonder why the Alakir don't use some sort of disguise or something though. To be honest, it doesn't seem like they tried very much at all besides walking through the front gate. We've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. The next piece of evidence is regarding Sadia's age. Skyrim is set in the fourth era, year 201, and the Great War took place from the year 171 to 175. So at the very least, an event taking place in the Great War must have been 26 years prior to the point we meet Sadia. This means that in order for Sadia to have been old enough to have had an impact on the fall of Tanif, she must be in her 40s at least, which is considered by many to be unbelievable. Honestly, I think that it could just be the case that she is in her 40s. Skyrim doesn't assign actual ages to their characters, they just all fall into the categories of child, adult, or old. Sadia, as with most of Skyrim, falls into the adult group. So yeah, I guess this could really just be down to personal opinion. I could believe that Sadia is old enough to have been part of the Great War, so this point isn't really convincing to me. Another question that arises when looking at Kamatu's story is why Skyrim? Why would Sadia flee to this province in particular? If she is working with the Thalmor, there are surely safer options like Valenwood or Cyrodiil that aren't, you know, currently in open rebellion against the Thalmor. Not only that, but because of the city's location, she would have had to travel across nearly all of Hammerfell in order to get here, which seems like a really strange thing to want to do when you just betrayed the province of Hammerfell. Finally, if she was a previous ally of the Thalmor, you kind of have to wonder why she would go to Whiterun, which is at risk of Stormcloak invasion, and not go to one of the holds that sit deep in Imperial territory. Or, what I think is the more pressing question is why she would not seek asylum with the Thalmor embassy near Solitude. If she was so instrumental in the siege of Tanith, you would think that she could find some help with the Old Merry Dominion. 
This can sort of be explained by the fact that she fled whilst the war was still happening, so she may not have had much choice as to where she went, and found herself being forced further into Hammerfell in order to avoid getting caught, especially as the Alakir were mostly focused in the south of the province, fighting the Dominion as they retreated. As for the lack of Thalmor or Imperial help, well, Sadia doesn't really have anything left to offer the Old Merry Dominion. She served her purpose and helped with the siege, but the Thalmor are unlikely to want to spend resources helping her out. If there's nothing extra in it for them to make her worth saving, they're probably quite happy to just leave her behind. There is also a treaty signed between the Old Merry Dominion and Hammerfell. The details of the treaty are kind of vague on this topic, but it could be very possible that the Thalmor are not supposed to interfere with Alakir business much like the White Gold Concordant stops the Empire from getting in the Thalmor's way. This set of evidence feels like it has some more weight to it. I don't have concrete explanations for them, I'm just not entirely convinced by them. Because, as I just went over, there are reasons that could exist for why Sadia would have wound up in Skyrim and Whiterun. Those are the more commonly cited pieces of evidence against Kamatu that I don't think really hold water. There are, however, a couple of details in his story that I don't think line up. For starters, if Sadia is lying, why would she tell this lie? Sadia is hiding out in a relatively neutral city, within a province that is under imperial occupation. We have seen from other quests that even the Stormcloak capital of Windhelm isn't entirely safe from Thalmor assassins. So why would she claim to be on the run from Thalmor mercenaries? If she isn't, it seems like this story may be just as risky, if not more so, than the truth. Maybe she's just making up stories on the spot and coming up with new identities on the fly, in an attempt to confuse her enemies. Smoke and mirrors wrong. If I don't know, how will they? Okay, now I want to cover the commonly cited evidence as to why Sadia is lying. Starting again with the least convincing, but first let's hear what Sadia claims is the truth. I don't know for sure. I spoke out against the Aldmeri Dominion publicly. I suspect that's why these men were hired to hunt me down. As mentioned earlier, there is a random encounter where two Alakir interrogate a Red Guard woman, and when left alone, the warriors will realise their mistake and move on. I've seen some claims online that this proves the Alakir are telling the truth, because they say they are searching for Sadia using her scar to identify her. And since the scar is real, that means they must be telling the truth. The obvious issue here is that this encounter does nothing to support the Alakir's motive. All it proves is that they are indeed searching for Sadia, which lines up with what both sides claim. So yeah, I don't think this really proves anything. Many also believe that Sadia is more likely to be lying because she's just one person, whereas the Alakir is an entire faction, and it's more believable that one person would betray her people than an entire group, especially a group like the Alakir. Which I do agree with, but that's working under the assumption that the entire group of Alakir know all the information. If Kamatu's lying to us, it's extremely possible that he's lying to the other Alakir as well, who was simply following his orders. Next we have Sadia's claim that the Alakir are more than capable of infiltrating Whiterun's guards and government, preventing her from going to them for help which just isn't true. If they were able to do that, they surely would have, instead of finding themselves trapped on the outside of the city. What's more, Sadian knows that one of the group has been arrested and is in Whiterun jail. If they were able to influence the guards, as Sadia claims, how would he have managed to get himself arrested sneaking into the city like this? The reason I'm not entirely convinced by this is because it doesn't poke holes in Sadia's actual story. It seems like she's just over-exaggerating or overestimating their abilities, which makes sense. She is from Hammerfell, and the Alakir are like the Redguard equivalent of Samurai, or Spartans. They're this group of legendary warriors that Sadia is likely to see as near unstoppable. So I honestly believe that she would think they can easily infiltrate the city of Whiterun. So those are the things commonly stated that I don't think are all that convincing. There are, however, a couple of other points that act as much more compelling evidence. First of all, the question has to be asked. If Sadia is being hunted by the Thalmor, why would they send a group of Alakir mercenaries? 
This doesn't make much sense if the plan is to assassinate Sadia, because we know from other quests that the Thalmor have much better and much more subtle options when it comes to actual assassins operating in Skyrim. But it also doesn't make sense if they are actually looking to take her alive. Why would they not just send their own agents? The Thalmor would have very little trouble entering Whiterun and arresting her. It seems weird that they would turn to mercenaries, and even weirder that they would go to a group of Redguard Alakir, who are going to stand out so much, and are going to face all sorts of difficulty with the Nords that practically any other mercenary group isn't going to have to deal with. For Sadia's story to be true, the usually ruthless and efficient Thalmor would have to have made the choice to willingly go with one of the worst possible options available to them for this mission, which I just don't think is very believable. Then the next question we have is, why Skyrim? This was a bit of an issue with Kamatu's story, but it makes even less sense for Sadia to be here if she's fleeing the Thalmor as she claims. This question can really be boiled down to why leave Hammerfell? They successfully repelled the Old Merry Dominion and managed to get a peace treaty signed, making it possibly the safest place in all of Tamriel for people looking to hide from the Thalmor. Even if the treaty allows the Thalmor to operate inside of Hammerfell, which I really doubt it does, she would have no end of people supporting and helping her. Skyrim, on the other hand, is under Thalmor control. There is a rebellion going on, but half of the province is going to be helping the Thalmor and the other half aren't going to be massively interested in helping a Hammerfell noble, certainly less helpful than the people of Hammerfell itself. Sadie is essentially claiming to be part of the liberation effort in Hammerfell, and her story is that she then fled the place she just helped liberate because she was under threat. It would be like if the Stormcloak successfully won the war against the Empire and took control of Skyrim, then immediately afterwards, Ulfric flees to Cyrodiil and goes into hiding there because he thinks there's a risk of him being assassinated by Imperial sympathisers. These are the biggest problems I have with Sadia's tale, and because of them, her story just doesn't make sense. So that's my conclusion, it's Kamatu who is telling the truth. Sadia helped the Thalmor get into Tanith, and as the war raged on, she fled north to escape the fighting, eventually making her way to Skyrim. With nothing else to offer the Thalmor, she found herself with no allies, so picked somewhere to hide. I believe that Kamatu is leading essentially a spec ops mission beyond enemy lines to capture the traitor and bring her back to Hammerfell, being forced to call upon local bandits, mercenaries, and random adventurers to help overcome the disadvantage they have in this foreign land. I always felt like this is the way the quest structure wanted you to play the quest anyway. We start with no information, but we'll seek out Sadia because, well, why not? Then Sadia will tell her side of the story. They're mercenaries, only in it for the money. Liar! Sure, looking back, it seems like her story is full of holes, but on a first playthrough with nothing else to go on, it makes sense that we're going to believe her. Then we go to Whiterun Jail and meet one of the Alakir, and if you talk to him a bit, you can learn that they're actually a bit more honourable than Sadia would have had you believe. After clearing out some bandits, and upon meeting Kamatu, we're given some more information, and learn that we were deceived. So we help the Alakir capture Sadia by lying to her the same way she lied to us. Well, well, well. How the turntables... And it ends with Kamatu giving the player character a sort of lesson about trust. Man, this is a pretty cool quest. Bethesda really must have a good understanding of lying and general deception to write a story like this. I wonder where they got that from. I imagine there are some people who are going to disagree with this conclusion. And that's okay. It's okay to be wrong. But be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. My next video is going to be the Bard mod pack. For real this time. Yeah, it sure looks like the Alakir are telling the truth. Although, they do have unique swords.